So there is still a station on the old Great Western Line, but there is nothing left of the Midland Railway Station except the Station Master's House, which can just be seen amongst the trees at the top of Station Drive. The viaduct, which spans the river 35 feet above the water, was built to replace the original timber structure designed by Brunel. And nowadays the old Midland Line is busy with trains whose drivers race through Stonehouse without a second glance. In 1867, a privately financed railway was built from Stonehouse to Nailsworth. There was a covered way from the nearby Midland station at Stonehouse, and the line carried as many as 18 trains a day in each direction, with stations at Ryford, Ebley, Dudbridge and Woodchester, as well as a spur to Stroud. But although it was later taken over by the Midland Railway, the line was never a financial success, and it closed in the 1960s. This is the bridge which used to carry the A449 road over the track. It is not so easy to see the rather less elegant footbridge built in 1901 to enable children to pass safely over the railway on their way from school to the church along Church Way. Part of the route of the old Nailsworth railway line is now occupied by a delightful footpath and cycle track which goes over the canal near the horse trough roundabout where there have been great changes since the trough was officially opened in 1914. And here we end part one of this story of Stonehouse with a view of the new Ebley Bypass completed in 1995, again on the line of the old railway track. But I wonder how long it will be before this is replaced by an even bigger highway. Until the invention of photography, contemporary scenes could only be recorded in drawings and paintings. The earliest photograph we have of the High Street was taken in 1864. And this is a view of Lower High Street 30 years later. Houses were being built in Pearcroft Road 90 years ago and these cottages at Hayward's End probably disappeared early this century. Behind the wooden bay windows this building looks much the same today and a hardware store now occupies the post office of 1899. And here is another shop front that has scarcely changed. It is still a news agent's. And apart from the loss of the railings, taken as scrap iron during World War II, the police station has hardly altered, although justice has not been dispensed in the courtroom since 1967. Two buildings at the top of Regent Street have been shops for a long time. We talked to Mr. Fred Robotham, 
who knew them as ladies and gents outfitters, both belonging to Mr. Mullins. My, one of my best memories was going with my mother to Mullins, that's one of the shops down the street, Mullins Christmas Bazaar. We used to go there and uh, oh, the things that were for sale, I'm afraid we couldn't afford most of them, but I was allowed to have a penny dip in the brand tub and uh, admire a lot of other things that I never thought I could possess. But that was quite a, quite a treat as a very small boy. Mr. Robotham lives in Park House, which was built on land bought from the Lord of the Manor in 1810. First, the site accommodated a brickyard, then a brewery, followed by the railway inn. The house was built in 1846, and here it is decorated to celebrate the jubilee of Queen Victoria. Near Park House, at the top of High Street, stands Orchard House. The shop was built onto the southern end at least 90 years ago. It accommodated Hill the grocer, and later Mr. Fawkes turned it into a general store, about the time he published this delightful advertisement in 1910. The first branch of the co-op was in Regent Street, but soon moved to High Street. You can see it to the left of Gardner's Garage in this picture, taken in the 1930s. The roof line is still the same today. The Woolpack Inn was the regular stopping place for the coach service between Gloucester and Bath. Coaches travelled down the High Street and along Regent Street, which used to be called Cross Street. The coaches joined the main road at Stonehouse Cross, where they had to make a sharp left turn by the ship inn. But this was quite difficult, and so a new road, called the Bath Road, was cut in 1839 from the bottom of High Street through Haywards End to the Horsetruff Junction. And now let's look along Regent Street. You can just make out where the sign was fixed to the wall of what used to be the Nag's Head. Obviously a very enterprising establishment. This is bank buildings, so called because it used to house a bank. It also accommodated Barnett's the Drapers before they moved to a shop at the top of Regent Street. We asked Mr. Robotham to tell us more of his early recollections. Oh, and then there was all the entertainments we used to have. We don't have now. I mean, I belong to the Choral Society, all to do with my interest in music, and we did all the great oratorios from Messiah, Elijah, Samson, the lot and uh, gave our performances in what is now owned by Wycliffe College, that is the subscription rooms, you see. And uh, then we, we were always having big fates and things like that. None of it now, all gone. These are the kinds of entertainment that were available. And then we asked Mr. Robotham about travelling on the train from Stroud to Stonehouse. You got into your train fairly early, if possible, and uh, you heard someone walking along the roof of the train, and it was the man lighting the, the gas lights. He, he lifted up a little thing on the top of the carriage and put a torch in, and the little mantles glowed. And so we came back by uh, by lamplight, and um, I remember coming past Dudbridge Ironworks on the way back, and sometimes seeing their blast furnaces blasting away and the flames going up in the sky, and then the train trundled on to Ryford, where uh, oh, the big mills, Stanley Mills, Clothworks, standing 
way back from the railway, but uh, all the lights would be, all the windows lit up and um, twinkling. The blacksmith and the wheelwright were side by side in hogs ground, now called the Burnham Walk. This model cart was made by Harry Cousins, who was the wheelwright nearly a hundred years ago. This lovely open space, so close to the town centre, was given to the people of Stonehouse in 1919 by a local benefactor, Jack Kimmins. And on the corner of the site is the community centre, which has been run by the parish council since 1946. There used to be a congregational church in High Street standing behind its commemorative arch. The church and the arch have been demolished and these modern buildings stand in their place. But some of the old tombstones have been preserved in the quiet garden behind. A Baptist chapel was built in Queen's Road in 1908 but within 20 years it was being used as a comrades club for ex-servicemen. I wonder what the founders would think of the way it's being used today. Mr Blick was a well-known local builder who was also responsible for this unusual row of wooden shops. 1981 saw the opening of Bethel Church, built mainly by volunteer labour, on the site of an old garage in Bath Road. The people of Stonehouse have always been keen to see that their money was well spent. This notice of 1866 speaks for itself. In 1882, George William Sibley came to Stonehouse from Taunton and bought Haywards Field Hall, where he set up a new school, which he named after the famous evangelist John Wycliffe. He had chosen Stonehouse as the location for his school because it was served by three railway lines. Here is George Sibley with his staff a few years after the school opened. Pupils were accommodated initially in the stable block which had been converted to provide classrooms, but very soon a new wing was added. We invited the present headmaster, Mr David Pritchard, to say a few words about the school. Wycliffe is very proud to have been associated with the town of Stonehouse for over 100 years for many of those who live in Stonehouse are employed at Wycliffe College. Wycliffe has indeed been associated with Stonehouse ever since Mr Sibley built a new public independent school here in 1882. Since that time, generosity of many benefactors has enabled new buildings to spring up on the Wycliffe campus. The most recent has been Wycliffe Dining Hall, opened in 1996 by Her Royal Highness the Princess Royal. 